Well, this is interesting. I'm uh, walking back to my house. Um, behind me is Chester, which is actually the ancient Roman city, fortress city, that used to be called Diva. It's where I live. Now, this little track here, if you just look, looks like any other footpath, doesn't it? But there's something very, very special about this particular track. Because unlike a lot of footpaths in a modern city, what I'm actually walking on is the track bed of a Roman civic route. So that means it wasn't designed for military purposes. If it was, it would be two carts wide so that you could get a cart going one way and it could easily pass a cart coming the other way. But this is a civic track, which meant it was only one cart wide. It's mostly for pedestrian traffic. And ahead of me, if I look this way, I would be heading straight for a place called Wilderspool, which is now part of a city called Warrington. And Wilderspool was famous for glassware, earthenware, pottery, ceramic. So there would have been a steady steam stream of traffic up and down this trackway, people bringing uh, their goods to sell in the Roman city of Diva. So as I walk back from the shops or the doctors or wherever, I'm walking on the same pathway that has been walked on for at least 2,000 years. And it's entirely possible that actually the Romans just improved an existing trackway which could go back all the way to prehistoric times, possibly. So it's such a sense of history. And of course, walking back to your house and thinking about the Romans, it's easy to then skip sideways and start thinking about the Roman impact on the Bible. Of course, Jesus grew up under Roman occupation. We know that. I suppose it's because I'm in Roman mode, but I got thinking about the story. It's in Matthew chapter 8. It starts on verse 5. Jesus is walking around healing and teaching, as he always did. And a Roman centurion comes up to him and says something really amazing, spectacular. He explains that his servant is ill, uh, in great pain, and fear and he's paralyzed and he says Jesus will you heal my servant and then the, he explains why he's asking Jesus and he says because I too am a man under authority now he was a man of authority but he chose to describe himself as a man under authority and explains that he also has authority over soldiers and can tell them what to do when to come when to go he says, I too am a man under authority. Or in other words, he's saying to Jesus, I recognize you. I know who you are. You too are a man under authority. Now that can only be a revelation through faith that he's understood why Jesus is doing what he's doing. And it's because Jesus carries authority over all the physical and spiritual dimensions of this earth. And because he's used to the idea of authority and authority enabling you to permit and prohibit, to make and to break, he knows that Jesus can do what he needs doing, i.e. the healing of his servant. And Jesus is staggered by it, because when he offers to come and pray for the servant, that's when the centurion says his little piece. He says, look, I'm not worthy to have you in my house, but also I don't need you to come because you can just say the word. And that's what Jesus does. He says, well, head on home, your servant is healed, and he is. And it's a fascinating insight into the secret of Jesus' power. It's not voodoo or magic. It wasn't about working himself into a frenzy or a trance or taking any mind-altering substances. It was just the calm, deliberate delivery and execution of authority, which came to Jesus from his Father. Authority is always given from somebody higher than yourself and in Jesus case it was his father now that's really exciting and we see him do it by calming storms raising the dead healing the sick all because he knew he had every right to do it because he'd been given the right to do it by his father now what's really exciting is we also are people of authority because Jesus took the authority he had and invested that in us and in some future vlogs, that's what I want to start thinking about. But just ponder that for a moment. You have been given a sphere of authority. 
Some have got more than others and you can be given more and more authority or you can lose the authority that you've had. But if you can get that same revelation like the centurion did, if God will open up your eyes spiritually, through faith you will come to understand you have authority. And if you've got it, why not use it? That's what we're here for, is to exercise authority in the name of Jesus over the demonic realm, over the physical realm, over the spiritual, emotional, psychiatric realms. There is tremendous power there, not to make us big and important, but to destroy the works of the evil one, which is the whole reason Jesus came in the first place.